All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Backyard Angling. And today we are going to be fishing on one of our local favorite limestone streams. You know, we're just incredibly fortunate to be where we live in central Pennsylvania that we can wake up any given morning and choose from a wide variety of these beautiful streams and be there in 40 minutes and on the water. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the geology, the entomology, and the tactics we use whenever we approach these bodies of water here in our home state of Pennsylvania. So to start off, we're gonna go over the geology of a limestone stream because that is really important and indicative of the life that it can support. Basically, you're gonna have huge rock formations like this that are gonna go from deep underground up to the surface, and this is gonna create the stream bed that the water flows over top of, creating a cooling effect. Also, you're gonna have gaps in these rocks that allows groundwater to come to the surface, cooling the water in the summer and keeping it a little bit warmer during the winter. So this allows for consistent fishing year round. Under that tree. Okay, so one of the things that is kind of unique with these limestone streams in Pennsylvania is the depth will vary a lot because of the elevation changes on our streams. So me and Doug were just fishing a nice kind of riffly area of water that wasn't that deep, but we just came up on this super deep hole. So you gotta switch tactics. You need to be able to adapt whenever you're nymphing. So I just added on, a, or I'm going to add on here, another section of tippet, and then put a patch rubber leg stone on there with something real natural off the back. We're going to see if we can dredge something up in the bottom of this pool. Good fish. Missed a good one. Right in this big deep hole. And you know, as deep as this hole is, you know. There's a good fish in there. There's gotta be. <laughs> Just a little one. Dredging the bottom. Took the uh, little scud pattern. Oh boy. Well, that's uh, not exactly what we were looking for, but uh, I mean, fish is a fish, you know? But I would assume at one time or another, maybe even now, there's probably a fish in there that would eat that thing in one gulp. So hopefully we can, we can find that fish here. But yeah, that was, that was uh, just doing that with your cider, you know? You just add a little bit of gink or some other type of floatant. Um, and again, you know, that's important to be able to do on these limestone streams. You need to be adaptable with your nymphing. You need to be able to adjust to the water because the water changes in an instant here, you know, so. Just another one here, way down in the depths. And he also went for the little scud pattern. Oh, 
Hopefully, uh, Doug can get a good shot of that. There he goes. Be real nice to catch a big one in here, but looks like we're just encountering the little ones. Pretty one in the net. We had a double. I had two fish on. I thought it was a big one at first. I yelled up to Doug. I was like, Doug, I got a big fish on. But it's kind of right at the top of where we were just, just greasing our uh, indicator. Pick this guy up. And this is a good fish for this stream. And uh, he came off of the bird of prey caddis. I thought whenever I hooked though, because there was a there was two fish on. I was so excited. And I was like, there's a that's a big one. Alright. Well, I almost had my first double. And if I would have caught a double, I would have never let Doug or anybody else in the family live it down. We will never we would never forget that. But uh yeah, right over in here. And again, with the adaptability of being able to switch up your nymphing tactics on these limestone streams with the variability of the stream, very important because this kind of came out of the riffle above that place that we were just greasing our indicator and kind of letting that uh, those nymphs sink to the bottom. Uh, and yeah, again here, I was tight lining through there. Um, so adaptability. So limestone is also known as soft rock, and this is really what contributes to the fertility of a limestone stream, because this soft rock creates some buffering capacity and allows the water to be more alkaline, which is more fertile for aquatic plants like watercress. And in turn, your macroinvertebrates that inhabit these streams feed on these, these plants, the trout feed on these macroinvertebrates, and that's why you get so many fish, so many fish can be supported in a limestone stream because of the availability of food and the fertility of the stream. This fish is keyed on caddises right now. Nice fish. Some butter. Got a little butter in the net. Let's get him back in. Nice fish. Switched up tactics a little bit again because we're coming up on a slow stretch here. And again, because of the variability of these Pennsylvania limestone streams, that requires you to switch tactics because the bug life is going to be different in different parts of the stream. This guy came in a waltz worm. Pretty little fish. We'll get him back in. Really nice red tips on the fins there. But uh, that's one of the things with Pennsylvania limestone streams, because of the geography in the central Pennsylvania region, you have variability in the water speed. You're gonna have plenty of riffles and runs, plenty of long, slow pulls like a classic limestone would have. And because of this, different insects are able to live in different stream conditions. Your riffles and your runs, you're gonna have some more mayflies and stoneflies that need that more highly oxygenated water then in your longer pools, like a section that we have right here, that's going to be more prolific to scuds. Things that don't really require that, but do still need that, uh, that vegetation that limestone streams can provide because of the alkalinity of the water that creates that vegetation. So the variability is huge, and that's why switching up in different waters is so important whenever you're fishing limestone streams, especially in Pennsylvania.
Okay, so we took a little bit of a break here. One of the things whenever you're fishing limestone streams, because of the diversity of insect life, it's good to look under some rocks. So right now we're in an area that is a tail out of a pool. We got some really good riffles right here that are running through. So we figured we'd take a look at the riffles first, flipped over a few rocks, and we have our nymphs right here. So let's take a look. Okay, so some of the stuff that we have in here, these bigger nymphs right here, those are gonna be some sulfur nymphs. And you can see on the abdomen, that's where their gills are, and that's what's gonna be on your mayflies. So if you can build some material into your fly that has that undulating movement, things like marabou, that can be very effective. Marabou, ostrich churl, things like that. Something really neat. We have a nice little caddis casing right there. If you can actually see it moving around with the caddis peeking out and a very effective pattern here in central Pennsylvania, is a peeping caddis, where you tie kind of like with a brown hare's ear or something like that, your caddis case, and then give it a green hot spot right at the front there, green, yellow, whatever color caddises are in your local stream there. We have some other caddises down around in here, some caddis larvae, some smaller mayflies, uh, some nymphs in the beta day family right in here some really interesting things and you can actually see that that little uh, olive nymph is attached onto that caddis casing just like they would in a stream they're going to be attaching onto rocks and things like that so it's really interesting to turn over these rocks there's so much that you can learn based on what type of what type of nymphs to use and even furthermore how to tie your nymphs in the future So we just moved upstream a little bit from that riffle and we are in a slower area of water and we filtered through a little bit of uh, watercress and this is what we found. We found some really cool stuff, stuff that is indicative of a slow moving part of a limestone stream. So first we have probably most notably are these scuds. So scuds are, you're really going to, that is a very, uh, um, very unique to limestone streams. You're gonna find a lot of scuds and crest bug type insects, which we did not find a crest bug, but they're definitely gonna be found in areas like that. Definitely something that you wanna fish. Also something that was interesting that we found is one of these scuds up here had a little red dot kind of in the intestinal track area of, uh, of the insect. Um, so tying in a little red hot spot, something, or orange, something you're going to see in a lot of scud patterns, something that's going to be pretty effective. Also, we found, man, did we find quite the large uh, caddis over here. Real nice sized caddis. And with that caddis, really interesting to see the underside of it. Uh, very, um, very chartreuse in color. So that chartreuse color isn't just going to work as a hot spot. It's actually going to be pretty natural uh, whenever you're tying your flies. Here's a really nice sized caddis casing, and I don't know if he might be a little shy, camera shy, but uh, there's a, if he'll poke his head out. But we found both of these uh, caddis in the slower, yep, there he is. Found both of these in the slower moving section of water. Um, and those are, caddises are generally, uh, you're gonna find them on a lot of different streams. They're a little bit more tolerant of a low oxygen content. Uh, and we also did find a few mayflies, not as prolific as, as uh, of, uh, a mayfly discovery. We didn't find nearly as much as many as we did in the riffle because they tend to need a little bit more oxygen in order to survive and to thrive. We did find mostly though in that slow moving water scuds, which is going is, is, is going to be pretty expected. So we're gonna wrap things up for today. Really nice day out to be out on the water. The weather is absolutely beautiful. And we hope that you guys learned something from the knowledge that Doug and I have kind of accumulated over the years on fishing limestone streams. It's a subject that really interests us, something that we're constantly trying to learn more about. So if there's something that you think we missed, something kind of neat that you know about limestone streams that you would like to drop in the comment section below, we encourage you to do that. And we'll see you guys on the water.